Well, just as the initial credit crunch failed to stay within the borders of the U.S., the effects of the collapse of the North American auto industry has also spread across oceans. The CBC's Adrian Arsenault is in London. Adrian. Mark, you could be forgiven for thinking that car makers in Europe or Asia might be just a little bit excited at the prospect of the big three U.S. manufacturers collapsing. More room for them in the market, after all. But there is no excitement. Globally, car makers are worried, and most believe that the loss of the American giants would so crush consumer confidence that all would end up paying. They already are, especially here in Europe, even though they are supposedly doing everything right building smaller, greener, more efficient cars, just like the one driven by analyst Ian Henry. Here in Europe, we have got a collapse of demand largely because of the credit crunch. We've got a lot of the car companies, factories going on short time working because of the collapse in demand. So how bad is it? Europe's new car sales were at their lowest level this year since 1966, and most believe it's just going to get worse. That is a huge problem for the 850,000 people employed in the sector. So governments are trying creative ways, anything, to save jobs. Solutions aren't always popular. This is a nationwide protest in Italy after half a million metal workers linked to the industry were told to just stay home until February so the factories don't end up producing surplus cars. Shorter weeks, pay cuts, extended wageless holidays, these are happening all across Europe. And in some countries, Germany and the Netherlands in particular, there are schemes whereby the government will pay a percentage of auto workers' wages for maybe as long as a year, just to make sure the companies stay afloat and people stay employed until perhaps the world comes to its financial senses. Mark? Thanks, Adrian. The CBC's Adrian Arsenault in London.